So coming off of that whole interview with Joe Rogan that Donald Trump did, I think the main question is, do you think that it helped Donald Trump or do you think it hurt Donald Trump? And I'm going to play just a few of the clips that I see uh, that are bubbling around out there, but I think it, it undoubtedly hurt Donald Trump. I mean, you can't go into some of the crazy that he went into in the way that he did it and not come out with any other conclusion. Now, I know there's a lot of people that's going to be saying, oh, it was the best interview. You know, they all say that always, always. But I just want to show you before we get there, folks, this is the kind of stuff that bubbles up that Donald Trump says that tends to just kind of drive me crazy. It's stuff like this. So this is Donald Trump. And again, before we get to the Joe Rogan stuff, he's in Nevada. And he says this, does he think we're stupid? And unlike us here tonight, we have an intelligent group of people. You have a man that doesn't need teleprompters. Wasn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Well, my gosh, there's a teleprompter screen right to his left, right to his left. You know, and sometimes I think he just throws stuff out there and pretends that it sticks. But it's obvious. You can see it. It's right there. It's right there. How can you say you don't need teleprompters when you're using one right there? And then you've got Joe Rogan, folks, who... Let's just give you a little bit of background here on Joe Rogan. Um, so in this episode of a particular podcast, this is from December 22nd, 2023, he was ranting about Biden, you know, and something that he thinks that Biden said that actually Donald Trump said. And then he got fact check on it. So, I mean, Joe works hard. Maybe it was just a stressful moment, but it's kind of stuff like this. And why would they do this live on air? Couldn't they have hashed all this stuff out beforehand? But just to give you an idea of what, who Joe Rogan really is, folks, here it is. Listen. The same stable genius that said the biggest problem we had in the Revolutionary War is we didn't have enough airport. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right. Just, what? Just for, He's talking for about the Trump. record. Is that <laughs> fake? It's not fake, but he was referencing Trump saying that. Here's what Trump saying it in 2019. Oh. Donald Trump said something oh. about that. He didn't say G Jesus. He said a stable genius, and that's where the, oh. the transcription. Let me hear what it says. What did he say? <clears throat> in June of 1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army out of the revolutionary forces encamped around Boston and New York and named after the great George Washington commander in chief. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, he... so he's talking about the Revolutionary War and how the Americans took over the airports. Yes. I mean, so there, there's a little bit of Joe Rogan, right? I mean, do we have to go through this on the air? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of other stuff that he said about COVID, didn't really agree with, you know, on and on. Common sense stuff. So he's not the sharpest Brillo pad in the kitchen folks. But there's this moment where Donald Trump is talking about trees. Now, just to give you a little back background, he's talking about California, no doubt. And the fact that, you know, the fires, the fires, you know, all this kind of stuff. And he's talking about um, the facts that were hard for him to learn and easy facts for him to learn. And evidently this was one of the easiest facts for him to learn, but I think it's an obvious fact. I mean, the fact that trees take up water and they don't burn as easily. I mean, this is, this is like fifth grade stuff. Do we, do we need, do we need this Donald Trump? This is not really helping you. When a tree falls down after 18 months, it becomes very dry. It's like, you know, like real firewood is right, bad. Right, right, right. You know, a tree that's up, these are all things I learned <laughs> the hard way, the easy way. But when a tree is up, it sucks water. It's wet. I went to that, the horror, they had a couple of horrible forest fires in and a tree. Mm, my God. Okay, so there were moments like that. And um, so yeah, just I a little, got more little odd, folks. Um, a little odd. And then we went into this. So Joe Rogan was talking about how the press is obsessed 
with Trump and how that actually helped him. Which is true. I, I totally believe that. But, you know, it it's... It, it shouldn't have helped him. I mean, crazy normally doesn't help people run for president. But I think that the whole dynamic with what Trump said in the crazy, they're eating the pets. You know, the fact that it incenses um, the intelligent folks out there, the folks that maybe not even intelligent, that's a stretch. Let's just say folks that have a head and a brain, right? And a, and a functioning brain at that. I mean, it sort of incenses those people. And I think that the far right loves that, you know, if you make anybody mad, um, in their view, it's a win. Than other people. And I didn't, it wasn't like I was trying. In fact, I don't know exactly why. Maybe you can tell me why. Oh, I could definitely I, tell you. He said a lot of wild shit. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he said a lot of wild shit. And then is. CNN, in their all their brilliance, by highlighting your wild shit, made you much more popular. Yeah. And, yeah. and they boosted you in the polls because people were tired of someone talking in this bullshit pre-prepared politician lingo and even if they didn't agree with you they at least knew whoever that guy is that's him that's really him yeah. when you see certain people talk certain people in the public eye you don't know who they are you have no idea who they are it's so this is kind of interesting folks so people were fooled i'll say fooled right everybody's going to disagree that's on the maga side naturally but i'll say fooled with the honesty of Trump vocalizing things, even though they were stupid, even though they were like the, the teleprompters right there and he says he's not using one, they think that because he speaks with such honesty from his heart, right? It's the, the honest bubbling up of the way that he says things that people believe that it must be true. And that's hardly the case. The fact that he doesn't speak like a politician and you interpret that as being, a, there's a sort of honesty around that. Um, I can't agree with that, but the fact of the matter is what he's saying is, is in most cases not true, right? So the honesty ends there. He might be honest with himself and the way that he delivers the information and it sounds like it's coming from the heart. That does not make it truthful very difficult to know you see them in conversations they have these pre-planned answers they say everything it's very rehearsed you never get to the meat of it what the one of the beautiful things about you is that you free ball like you get out and you do these huge events and you're just talking and you're making we, we've we've highlighted you on the show many times where you when you did this biden impression where he's walking around he doesn't know what he's doing it's, it's funny it's it's stand up <laughs> it's funny stuff but yeah. it's like you uh, and you were making fun of Elon one time. <laughs> you were doing an Elon impression. It's great. You you have like comedic instincts. Like when you said to Hillary, you'd be in jail. Like that's it's great timing. Yeah. I think I'd rather have a president than a comedian. But it's like that kind of stuff was unheard of as a politician. Like no one had done that. And I think you know, it's funny. You need at least the attitude of a comedian when you're doing this business. This is a very yes. dangerous business. For it's all show. A very tough business. It's when, all show, right? It's the most dangerous yeah, business. It's the most, well, for, for a job? Yes. I mean, it's, other it's than going to war and being a firefighter or being a cop, yeah. it's the most dangerous it's business. It's the most because dangerous. For being president is the most dangerous. Especially you. I mean, oh, we, much we, more you so. haven't even got to the election. There's been two assassination attempts. And they've yeah. brushed those out of the news like it was nothing. Yeah, they'd rather not talk about them. Um, Imagine if there was a assassination attempts on Biden, how hard people would be attacking the right. How they would be trying to get guns taken away from people. They would try to ramp up gun laws. Okay, Joe. Whoa. Hey, hold on there for a second. The fact of the matter is the person that grazed Trump's ear was a Republican. So, hence... A little bit more of a muted outcry not that the press didn't talk about it they did but if that person had been a liberal and had sort of a social presence and had done that it would have been far far worse in terms of uh, you know their interpretation of it and you know the left is out of control they would have gone so much further with it but that's the reality of why that didn't happen is because the guy was in fact a Republican. So folks, um, there's this one here and they're talking about Donald Trump and the whole rigged election thing. 
And Joe asked him, are you going to present your information? And Donald Trump just kind of uh, does one of these. Have a listen to this. We could go into this stuff. We could go into the ballots or we could go into the overall. I'll give you another one. Are you going to present well, well, this let me, ever? Uh, like, what, do you do you think? Like, let me a, just give you one okay. more. There's before. nothing there. That's why. 51. We could go into this stuff. We. But folks, when you talk about election fraud, there there is real election fraud happening right now in this election. I don't know if you've seen this, but this is from The Guardian. It says Pennsylvania today. By the way, this is today. Pennsylvania officials investigating 2,500 voter registrations for fraud. And the article says officials in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, are investigating about 2,500 voter registrations after election workers discovered signs they may be fraudulent. Registrations under investigation were dropped off in two batches just before Pennsylvania's voter registration deadline on Monday. Election workers contacted the DA's office after they noticed several suspicious applications that contained the same handwriting, signatures for voters that didn't match that was on what was on file, and an accurate personal identifier information, including names, addresses, social security, and driver's license numbers that didn't match. And this is being said by Heather Adams, the DA of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, during a press conference on Friday. Investigators also spoke with voters who said they had not requested or filled out the forms that they, that were turned in, she said. They found about 60% of those uh, ballots to be fraudulent. She acknowledges that there were some legitimate ones in there, as you normally would do if you're trying to fool people, right? Throw some real ones in. The effort appears to be associated with a large-scale canvassing group. She did not identify which one and said that two other counties in the state are investigating a similar issue. Well, I can guarantee that they're going to find out that those were Republican-based, Trump-friendly groups that have done that. So there's voter fraud. There's the real deal, right? Not this made-up stuff that Donald Trump is talking about that he has no information for. And, folks, the interesting thing about that, all of that information is this, that he went on to say he pivoted right after he did that that weird pause where he said, are you going to turn this, which you have in, Donald Trump, about voter fraud? Uh, no, of course not, because there's nothing there. It's a nothing burger. But then Donald Trump pivoted to this. He said, let me give you just one more example. He said, 51 intelligence agents came up with a laptop from Russia. It turned out to be totally false. So he pivots to this whole argument that 51 intelligence agents come up with that. That laptop, the Hunter Biden laptop, was from Russia. And then it turned out to be totally false, he claims. So instead of pivoting to something else, maybe a little bit more substantive in terms of what he thinks was election fraud, he pivots to the laptop. Hunter's not even running for office, right? I mean, none of this makes any sense, folks. It's, it's all just... It's, it's like he was talking about earlier. It's a bit of the comedy, right? You have to be a little bit of a comedian. And this is part of his routine, folks. No, I mean, that was, that was not helpful, Donald Trump, that whole dialogue where you couldn't pivot to something else more substantive. Instead, you pivot to Hunter Biden's laptop, for God's sakes. And here's Donald Trump saying that um, he didn't lose, but then he did lose. I won by like, I lost by like... Uh... I didn't lose, but they say I lost <laughs> Joe. It's like he catches himself and he just kind of deflates when he hears I, himself kind of reckon with, I lost the election. You could just see his chest kind of cave in. And then he kind of buoys himself back up and says, I didn't lose. So he's, he's convinced himself of something that's patently false, folks. It's obvious. And then he talks about income taxes again here. Once again, folks, let's play this one. Did you just companies. float out the idea of getting rid of income taxes and replacing it with tariffs? Well, okay. Were you serious about that? Our, yeah, sure. But why yeah, sure. Did, Did you just companies. float? So here's the problem with that. Let's just assume for a second that tariffs would work, and it's the, it's the great panacea. It's the great fix-all. Nobody has to pay taxes if we have tariffs that are out there on everything that, that comes in. Let's not even deal with the whole notion of inflation, right? Let's just deal with that logic of using tariffs. Well, folks, we've got these boom-bust cycles, right? Recessions, you've got depressions, you've got great times, you've got bad times, you've got middle-of-the-road times in the economy, and you've got international trade that goes up and down. So you're going to pin the whole economy on tariffs, right? Good times, bad times. I mean, who's going to repair the bridges? Well, we're having a bad time. It's I'm sorry. 
uh, you know, it's a, it's a worldwide thing. It's not my fault. You know, it's a worldwide thing. We're having a bad time here. We can't repair that bridge. You know, the, the, the money from tariffs is down. What do you want us to do? I mean, is that what we're left with in this Trump situation here of getting rid of taxes? And folks, in closing, they say there are two things that are guaranteed, death and taxes, right? And I guarantee that if you take the taxes out, it would just be a slow death for the nation. A slow death. So there we have it, folks. Was that interview helpful? I don't think so.